Welcome to Electrified. It's your host, Dylan Loomis. Hope you had a wonderful weekend and a quick shout out to my newest patrons, Richard, Joshua, Laura, and Jack. I greatly appreciate your support. So first up today, a quick note here from Patrick on Twitter, Google, Microsoft, Adobe, IBM, Palo Alto Networks, and now Twitter. Yes, Jack Dorsey is stepping down as CEO of Twitter if you missed it all grew up in India. Wonderful to watch the amazing success of Indians in the technology world and a good reminder of the opportunity America offers to immigrants. And Elon chimed in, USA benefits greatly from Indian talent. And I wanted to mention this because I think this is one of the most overlooked reasons for Tesla to potentially expand their foray into India because of the software engineering development talent in that area. I think it would be a huge benefit to Tesla. It would fit very well with their ethos and obviously how Tesla is built. So just a reminder that if Tesla does end up in India, there will be many more benefits than just Tesla's ability to sell its products in that region. Over the weekend, we got some great news finally on Giga Berlin if this indeed proves to be true. So it looks like Tesla's production at Giga Berlin is set to start in December. And now they're calling for about 30,000 vehicles to be made in the first half of 2022. I know a lot of people think this is a very low number, but there's a few things at play here. One, hopefully Elon has learned from past mistakes and he is sandbagging the number. So under promise, over perform, that is what we want. And two, as we know, there is plenty of new technology in these German built Model Ys, so a slow and steady production ramp makes the most sense with all of these new factors at play. Production at Giga Berlin was supposed to start in July, but we are well aware of all of the delays. Regulators are expected to grant, however, the necessary permits within days, but there was no reporting of where this publication received its information. However, five units of the Model Y have already been completed at Giga Berlin, though not on the production line. In January, serial production will start with 1,000 cars per week and gradually increase from there. So here's to hoping that this report is true. And now these Model Ys out of Giga Berlin are most likely going to have the 2170 cells. At least that's the community's general assumption at this point, the 4680s being built at Cato Road, which more on momentarily, but those should be going to Giga Austin for the ramp there. And down the line, we'll just have to wait and see if Tesla plans to ship any of those 4680s from Cato Road to Giga Berlin before the 4680 ramp of the cells in Giga Berlin is up and active. And I'd be very curious to hear from you guys, how do you think Tesla will handle these 4680s in the Model Y? Is there going to be a new model with more range and better performance, or are they going to keep the specs mostly the same and ultimately just use less cells and increase their margins so that they can ramp up production even faster? Let me know how you think they should handle it below. Also over the weekend, I'm sure a lot of you saw Dave Lee's video about Elon sending that email about the end of quarter wave and the end of quarter push. So I'll touch on it briefly just in case you missed it, but Elon said it will still be very intense, just slightly less than in the past. This is something that Tesla and Elon have been talking about for months now, trying to reduce this end of quarter push because they spend a lot of money on contractors and overtime and expedited fees that because they wanted to make their quarterly numbers that great, but now they're in such a strong place, they don't need to play the game as much anymore, and they're just gonna shift down to focus on saving costs, improving margins, but the real impact on smoothing out that end of quarter delivery wave is really only gonna happen when Giga Austin and Berlin come online for local production in those regions, and you have less shipping around the world and shipping from the West Coast to the East Coast in the United States. And here's the email that Elon sent to employees. I will not read it to you just because I'm assuming a lot of you have already seen it, but in case you haven't, go ahead and pause the video and read it for yourself. Another note here, there are plenty of users getting delivery dates of TB BD, both people that have placed orders months and weeks ago and some that are placing orders now. I think a lot of this has to do with the uncertainty of production timelines. You know, when will Tesla be able to start building Model Ys at Berlin? When are they gonna do it in Austin? How much will they have to ship from Fremont? I think it's gonna be a matter of patience here, but just so everybody is aware, there are a lot of people having their delivery dates jerked around from, you know, April of 2022 to January 2022, and a lot of people don't even have a date at this point. 
So hopefully when we get more set production schedules for these new factories, Tesla will have a better idea of these delivery dates. And last week we talked about the expansion at Giga Shanghai and Gary Black comments, an increase in Shanghai capacity from 550,000 units per year to 1 million per year to be completed by April, 2022, which will of course be another catalyst for Tesla stock. Sawyer also added some more context here and he actually mentioned up to 1.5 million vehicles in 2022. But remember Gary was talking about April and having that 1 million unit figure by then. But Sawyer said for comparison, one of the largest auto manufacturing plants in the world, VW's Wolfsburg plant in Germany produces about 800,000 vehicles per year. And the most insane part, VW's plant is 70 million square feet versus 9.3 million for Giga Shanghai. We don't know the official size that Giga Shanghai will eventually be with this expansion through 2022, but it certainly won't be 70 million square feet. This speaks a lot to Tesla's efficiency. And one more note about Giga Shanghai from Sawyer. According to Jason Yang, Giga Shanghai in November can produce more than 1600 Model Y and more than 2000 Model 3 every day. This would give Giga Shanghai a weekly output of up to 25,200 vehicles or a run rate of 1.3 million vehicles per year. So remember, just because they have a theoretical capacity and that ability does not mean they are actually executing at that level. Either way though, very bullish as we head into 2022, paired with the expansion plans at Giga Shanghai. Now, over the weekend, this interview with Andrew Sorkin and Mary Barra got a ton of traction. Once again, Mary Barra just had nothing nice to say about Tesla, and Andrew actually did a pretty good job of pushing her and bringing up hard questions. So if you have somehow missed this, I have linked the full episode below. I'll just play a few quick clips for you, and then we'll move on. Well, I see Cruz as being incredibly well positioned. I mean, Cruz literally in San Francisco is one permit away from being able to actually charge for rides in San Francisco. And it will be the only AV company working in a dense urban environment. And we know that's a tougher AV uh, solution to solve. So I couldn't be more proud of what the Cruz team has accomplished. And I think one of the reasons they're, I think, in the lead is because of the deep work that they're doing with General Motors. I mean, the deep integration of the technology, the fact that we're leveraging all the automotive know-how for the origin that comes out in a year. So um, I'm super excited about it. But then we also have, you know, Super Cruise and Ultra Cruise, right. which are a driver assist technology, but continuing to be more and more capable. Our technology has independently been assessed to be the best. And so I, I feel like we have a very robust uh, plan as it relates to autonomy, you know, coming at it with solving the super hard problem and then taking costs down, but also, uh, you know, continuing to increase. So I wouldn't trade our autonomy position okay. with anyone. So if I, I'll let you claim that you're, <coughs> that you're in the lead, if, yeah. if you like. Yes, I like. Um, right now, GM, in terms of, uh, the, the electric vehicle market, you have about 9, 10% of the market. Tesla has about 63% of the market. Five years from now, if you succeed, but everybody else has their own success right. in this space, mm -hmm. what does that pie chart look like? Well, we have said, just like we're the leader today, if you set aside, you know, with the distortion that's happening with the semi shortage, we have been the leader in the United States. We've been number two in China for many years. Um, I think when you get to, you know, wanting to get, <clears throat> excuse me, to, you know, 50% all EVs, you have to win customers that they only drive one vehicle. They only own one vehicle. They depend on that vehicle every day. General Motors has brands that they trust. We have the highest loyalty rating. We have manufacturing plants that are ready to go. And so when I look at our ability to scale, to serve customers, I, I think we're incredibly well positioned and we're not gonna cede our leadership position to anyone. And a lot of people were also sharing this where Mary Barra was on the cover of Time Magazine for GM being one of the 100 most influential companies. Now this was actually back in April, so it's not like this just happened after everything that happened in the news you know, the last few weeks. But it was actually a pretty good article from Time, so if you're interested in reading it, I have linked it below for you. Now, as mentioned, I don't want to belabor this point about GM and Mary Barra and leading the way. It's been, you know, beaten to death basically already. However, here was an interesting note from Andrew on Twitter. If you look at job postings for equivalent software engineering jobs at GM and Tesla, you'll notice that Tesla's low end is near GM's high end. Plus, Tesla has a generous stock option plan that GM does not have, and those numbers are likely not reflected here. Now, yes, this is just one small anecdote, but I believe it is worth sharing. So GM had this position, automated driving, ADAS, virtual simulation engineer in Warren, Michigan, between 50 and 90K for a glass 
last door estimate, which yes, these are not going to be the most accurate, but just a rough ballpark. Then we have Tesla Software Engineer Autopilot Simulation, Palo Alto, California, 81 to 173,000 for the glass door estimate. Here we have another note from Sawyer. He's been told Tesla Cata Road 4680 production output has more than doubled in recent months. Now he was not able to share any specifics about the output, which is unfortunate, but totally understand. However, it's important to note, and all I really care about is knowing that progress is being made at Cato Road at that pilot plant, which will set up well for the 4680 ramp at Giga Berlin, at Giga Austin, and that's going to be crucial for the next gen vehicles, the Cybertruck, the Roadster, and the Model Y. And this was very quick. The Texas Department of Licensing and Regulation has officially completed their review of all five of Tesla's Giga Texas filings. The reviews included general assembly casting, body and white paint and stamping, all of the permits now show review complete. So it would have been so nice to see this type of speed and efficiency for the review process out of Giga Berlin, but what's done is done and it's great to see this speed at Giga Texas. And for those keeping score, these filings were submitted just 10 days ago. And do you guys remember this when Elon was asked, is there any chance of us getting lithium ion 12 volt batteries when replacing the lead acid batteries in our current Tesla Model 3s and Ys? Elon said we will try, preferably for Tesla too, as they last so long. Unlike other makers of cars, our goal is not to profit from service. Best service is not needing service in the first place. Well, fast forward to today and we see this image, the first look of the Model Y Performance's low voltage lithium ion battery, replacing the lead acid battery, which many people have been calling for. This is just a superior option. In case you're in the mood for some holiday shopping, there are some new Cybertruck socks that are live on the Tesla shop website. I have linked this below. And yes, there are some other designs as well. Once again, linked below if you're interested. A quick note here, we have little known Mireille Asset Securities lifting their Tesla price target to $1,466 up from $937, maintaining a buy rating. I have not found the report with their details as to why. Not yet, this was basically breaking news. Um, but if anything comes up, I'll definitely share it later this week. A note here on Rivian. So we're getting some real world tests of the R1T and this individual on Instagram actually did a towing test and the results were about what you would expect, maybe a little bit worse. Rivian claims a range loss of about 50% on its website when towing. They have an 11,000 pound towing capacity. Now, Joey from Tesla Roddy here said there was a 62% degradation of the battery after just 118 miles of travel. I just wanna be clear, it's not really that the battery was degrading. I think he just meant to say that there was a 62% reduction in the state of charge. The battery doesn't degrade after just one cycle of charge. So just wanted to clear that up. But also this test was done, they were going 73 miles an hour, which as far as I know is pretty fast when you are towing something. And the total weight of the R1T with the trailer, the occupants and the cargo was 14,260 pounds and the trip was from Detroit to LA. This was Gideon the Rivian, very nice name on Instagram. Once again, I'll link that below for you if you wanna check it out from the original source. And this is definitely a big argument for why people do want increased range figures, you know, up past 500, because if you're gonna tow anything or load stuff in the car, you know, you're gonna see your range decrease significantly. And this isn't even considering winter driving in the cold, which, once again is going to have a negative impact. So you could very easily go from 500 miles of range down to 200 or 250 if you're towing or carrying heavy payload in the cold or even up hills. And here we have Nissan set to invest $17.6 billion over the next five years to, you guessed it, ramp up their EV offerings. Nissan said it would aim to roll out 23 new electrified models by 2030, 15 of which will be fully electric, so eight of which presumably will be hybrid. It's targeting a 50% electrification mix for its Nissan and Infiniti brands by the end of the decade not the greatest. On the battery front, they are planning to introduce all solid state batteries, ASSB, to the market by 2028. A pilot ASSB facility in the Japanese city Yokohama will be readied as early as fiscal year 2024. And here we have more CEO speak with most likely mostly empty promises at this point. With this, we'll be able to double the energy density versus current lithium ion batteries. 
With batteries made smaller and thinner, we can offer flexible layout with more dynamic performance, expanding to larger segments like pickup trucks. So yes, it's great to see the initiative and hopefully they can be efficient with this spending, but the question always remains for all of these legacies, is it going to be too little too late? And a quick note here, BMW started their i4 electric car deliveries to customers. So today BMW just held an event at its HQ in Munich to deliver the i4. Here are some images from the event and the i4 is offered in different versions with a battery pack having a capacity of 83.9 kilowatt hours and up to 300 miles of EP a range based on its own estimates. The vehicle also has DC fast charging capacity up to 205 kilowatts and the BMW says the i4 will start at 56,395 in the US when it launches next year. And just because I know some of you will be wondering my thoughts on this Warren Redlick situation. So first of all, Warren, if you happen to see this, I am sorry for calling you reckless. I honestly never meant to offend you. I could tell you were a little frustrated with that segment. So for that, I am sorry. Really, my only objective was to add a little bit of nuance to the conversation about that one charging test that Tom Malogny did. And I'm not at all trying to make excuses for Lucid. I'm not even really trying to defend them. I just wanted the people in my community that were coming talking about that one charging video saying, hey, I think this is leading them to be a scam. Like I said, I just wanted to add some color to the discussion. And the last thing I'll say, guys, is look, genuinely, it was not my intent to take shots at Warren. I think any of you that have been here for any amount of time know that. However, I just think ultimately we have different opinions on what classifies as a scam, and I think that's okay. And just to be clear, I was not in any way trying to argue that Lucid's battery pack is indeed 118 kilowatt hours. I just just wanted to bring up a few conversation points that would at least leave that option on the table for now. And I'm not that interested in going any further down the rabbit hole at this point with Lucid. I'm not invested in Lucid and right now I have a lot of things that I'm very excited about learning and researching in. This topic really just isn't one of them. So ultimately we'll just wait and see, but most importantly, Warren, my apologies for offending you once again, never my intent, relationships matter to me, and I'm here to be an uplifting light in the community, not somebody that gets into it over ultimately what will boil down to be a trivial matter. And not that Lucid turning out to be a fraud would be trivial, however, when you contextualize it in the grand scheme of the world and other things that are going on like real humanitarian crises, it is at least to some degree a first world problem, but Warren, Hope there are no hard feelings. But that is all for today. Please take a second to like the video if you did. Hope you guys have a wonderful day and a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.